Today is Tuesday, October 30th. I am H.F. Williamson. I am interviewing Albert Hellregel for the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress American Folklife Center. We are at Studio X, Campbell Hall, Urbana, Illinois. Henry Radcliffe is the Director of Lighting, Sound, and Camera. I'd like you to start by telling us where you were before you went into service and how you came to join. Well, I was in Sandwich, Illinois, and this year was in 1941. I went into service at the uh, 31st of March. I went into Sycamore. Just one guy went in. My order number was 97. We went into Sycamore. From there, we went into Chicago, Fort Sheridan. And we stayed in there about a day or two, and then we went to Camp Grant. And Camp Grant, and then we went, then we went from Camp Grant to, to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Okay. I didn't stay there too long. I had a nosebleed every day, and I went in the hospital. Oh my God! So I, I didn't get too much awkward training. So then I, I stayed there. I was there about two or three months at Fort Bragg. We had sand every day. We even had sand in our food. Oh. <laughs> and, and then we come back and come back to Camp, Camp Forest, Tennessee, the 33rd Division. That was a National Guard outfit. So that Fort Bragg was where you yeah. did your basic Fort, training? Fort Bragg, I'd done my basic training okay. at Fort Bragg. And then you went to but Tennessee? But I, did, I didn't get too much done because I was in the hospital with nosebleed. Oh my. And then they burnt out my nose and I got better. And, and then I, when I come back to Camp Forest, Tennessee, they give me a little more training, you know, foot training and stuff. And we, we, we was there then till, till the war broke out in 1941, December the 7th. And, we, and, then we went, and then we went to New York to get on a ship. Now, where uh, did you train? Did you do any artillery training in the United States? Yeah, yeah we had the 155 howitzers. We'd go out, we went on maneuvers in 41. We was gone one whole summer down to Arkansas and Louisiana. We wasn't in camp. We went on maneuvers, and I was with the whole outfit. The whole outfit went. So this and, was a large war game. Oh, yeah, what war games? Yeah. Oh, wow. uh -huh. Yeah, we fired the guns and everything. 155 howitzers. That's all they had then, because they were World War One vet, uh, World War One artillery guns, yeah. and uh, that's all we had <laughs> then. And then we come back off maneuvers, and then war broke out December the seventh of '41. You know, in Jefferson from Port Harbor. Two weeks we were headed for overseas. Wow. We had 32 ships in the convoy. We went through this the coming out of New York. You yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We went through the Panama Canal. It took us quite a while to get through there. That new ship, no aircraft carriers or no battleships, just a troop ship. I had 5,000 on my ship, and there's 5,000 on another. We got into the storm, neither one of them took water over the bow, and, and then we come out of it. All the other ships, they took water over the bow. We run into a big storm. All the lead pipes started breaking, and all the water started to flow all over, oh, and then we had a great big hole full of potatoes. We got down the Caribbean, they started to rot, <laughs> so they had to shovel all them out. It smelled so bad. <laughs> and then we got in Australia. We, it took us a whole month to go over. So we you went straight across to No, Australia? no, we zigged and zagged. Yeah, but you went? It, yeah, we went straight to Australia. And we got over there while the, the tide was out, we couldn't go in. We had to wait till the tide come in. The big ships drove so much water that they couldn't get in. So the guys, they'd grease up and go out through the portholes. Some of them we never found. What? No, they never come back. Holy cow. They, they grease up. You, had, you couldn't get through. It was too big, you couldn't get through. They, them girls would come out there with hardly nothing on the little sailboats at night and pick up them guys. And they wanted they wanted to see the American soldiers. Oh my gosh! We stayed there about a week or two. We lived right in the, we lived right in the houses where the people we lived, and they had little five-gallon buckets for a toilet out and back. And a guy'd come around every morning, dump them, and come back. We slept on the porch, two guys, and we was all together. We'd go out and march every day on the street, you know. Well, I think we was there about a week or two. And then we went back to New Caledonia, no guns. We waited there six weeks on New Caledonia, that's French Island. That was back about five or six hundred miles from Australia, north. And we stayed there, I think we stayed there right around six months before we got the guns. And then in November, we went in to Guadalcanal. We, we fought, we was were, there, while you were at New Caledonia, was there any concern that the Japanese well, well, yeah. invasion might be coming close? No, yeah, they were bombing Australia when we got in Australia. They were bombing Darwin already then, but they never got any farther. And then what? Then we got in New Caledonia, we finally did get our new guns six months later. And then we went into Guadalcanal. How long did you have time to train on the guns before uh, you went to Guadalcanal? Uh, hardly any at all. Really? No, no, just a few, just a few weeks. That's all. And then we went into action right away. I remember we got off the ship. You had to went in and clear your waist. You know, you, 
PD boats only take you in so far, and you had to wade the rest way in water. So they, the, the artillery came in how long after the first invasion forces went on my island? Uh, well, the uh, uh, first Marine Division was there first. They had artillery and all their guns and everything then. They had dead Japs laying in every place when we got there. But they was glad to see us. 32,000 guys moved in, American Division. Right. They come from New Caledonia. They you want came. to tell us a little bit about the makeup of the American Division? The American Division was made up of the 33rd Division from Camp Forest, Tennessee. There was all different outfits in it, and they just made one big division out of it. But the guys were from all over the United States. They were from Chicago and East St. Louis, Rock Island, Moline, every place. Were they, there some they, foreigners they, in the division? They, 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 they was from all over. All the guys were. Were there people from other countries too? No, no, just just, just America. Americans. Yeah, America. Okay. But we had when we got there, then well, we had Australian troops there too. Okay. And they'd go out and scout, and they knowed right where them Japs was. They, they was real good at that. They'd go out on patrol, and they'd radio back where they were, and then we zero in with the artillery, you know, and we'd put out three rounds in six seconds. Wow. And they thought we had automatic artillery, <laughs> you know, twelve guns far and that much. Right. <laughs> And they, they, we went one gun to one gun eyes on. We burnt the rifling out in it, and the shell won't go off till it goes through the shell gun. It's got to rotate so many times. And one time we were firing, and this guy he missed the breach, and I, I had it open, but I didn't close it, and it fell on the ground. It was a timed shell. The minute that went out through the tube, it went off, because see it was timed, right. and it, it hit the ground, it hit the metal, and I thought then it won't go off though till it goes through the gun, and it hadn't got out over. I don't think it got out over 100 feet and it went off. Oh, no. It was a time shell. And they was timed for about oh, 30, 40 feet above the ground. So, so it just mowed everything off, see. So you had a, the, uh, the, the group had a battery of 12 of uh, these? Yeah, yeah, that, that was a battalion. A battalion had 12, 12, 12 of those. Guns. And you were supporting the yeah, front I was line a, troops? I was in a number, a number C. I was the second gun in the, in the second in battery. Okay. Battery C, I was the second gun. My gun always fired first. All right. Yeah, I always fired first. So they knew where to... How to we, range in? Well, we must we must have fought them for about a month though before we secured it, about about a whole month we fought there. But who One were time, you supporting the troops up in front? Who yeah, were yeah, infantry, infantry troops ahead. Yeah, yeah. they they with the American Division. How often did you have to change your positions? Well, we would moved ahead one night. And we moved ahead to the infantry, and they was mortar shelling us, so we got out there in a hurry. <laughs> you know, yes. we just moved ahead too fast. But we was always right behind the infantry. I don't imagine over a couple hundred yards, right behind the infantry. Right. Yeah, we never fought any hand-to-hand -hand fighting with the Japs, but you had to stand guard at night, you know, because a lot of times you didn't get far mission after night because the Japs they didn't attack too much after night. You know, they 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 didn't they they stayed in their group, you know. And so, about yeah. how long were you on Guadalcanal? I was I was there I was there that fall till I got a hernia, and then I I left and went went to New Hebrides. I was with the Navy for 21 days. Sure. Uh huh. We fought there about I think about four or five months. Anyhow, at least that. We'd change positions all the time. Right. Yeah, there all the time on Guadalcanal. That was the first island we took back. The first, first, first island we took back. And it. then I went, I got evacuated. I went out one night and lifted on the trail. Nobody would get up. And I went out and lifted on the trail and I had a hernia. It went down, oh. went down in my sack below on one side. I couldn't even go to the bathroom. And so I was with the Navy for 21 days. Then I was New Hebrides. I got operated on, then I went to New Zealand. The solar ship come out, it was all white. Had a very big red cross on it. I was down there about six weeks. And then, uh, then I went from there, come back there to get back to New Caledonia again to get my outfit. They was on Fiji before we went into Bogansville. Oh, so got, you were able to join the same, your same yeah, outfit? Yeah, I'd like to get back my own outfit. <laughs> did see. that always happen when you got injured? Or did well, you? no. When I, when I come back from New Zealand, I got a attack of malaria again, and I had yeah, everything was just yellow too, and I got 47 letters one day there, and then I had, went to the lieutenant and everything. I had a terrible time getting back because he didn't want to transfer me. He wanted to keep me, and they was going to go to the Philippines. Oh. So we, I kept on him, kept on him. So when I got back, they didn't give me a job, just run this big generator and the lights, and then it wasn't. When I got there, they what happened was in the in, in Fiji. They was in the hospital of malaria. Oh. Reattack, see. Right. Yeah, reattack. And then we went in there, I think, just right after Christmas. We went into Bogansville. So now you're uh, back with your original. I'm American back my outfit. That oh, was, that's you know, nice. Same gun crew and everything. Oh, great. Yeah. Nobody got killed. Nobody got killed while I was gone. Right. They didn't stay on Guadalcanal too long after I left. It was pretty well secured. But when we went to Bogansville, we didn't fight there too much. 
I got the pick to come home. I had malaria and had hepatitis and I had a hernia that broke again. And I, I got to come home. My 250 guys, they didn't like me too much when I left. They, 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 didn't, they didn't like to see me leave. Oh. I don't know who they, and then they left after they I. you were getting off easy? Yeah, or? this was getting late. This was getting late. And, and uh, when they hit the beach in Normandy, I was coming home. Could you remember what year that was? 44? 44. I was coming home then. I come home on a Liberty ship. I went back from New, from Bogensville to New Cal, I mean to, to, to Guadalcanal again. Stopped off there and picked up some more troops to bring home. They wasn't fit for action no more. Some okay. of them had their hands shot off or their legs shot off, you know. And we picked up some there, and we come straight home. Come right straight to, we come right straight to, to, to the Panama Canal again. Come back through there, and I was on guard all the way back. That's the only time I never did get sick. I was on about six different ships. <laughs> I never did get sick, and they, they thought I was, uh, I had more MP man, you know, on my arm. They thought, they thought I was Marine, and you know, the guy, we picked up 6,000 troops down at Panama. They was there all during the diversion, you know, and they come back. And, and then we come back to New Orleans, come up the Mississippi River, and that paddle was just kicking out mud and dirt like that. Oh. I didn't go out and celebrate that night because I knew I was going home. Okay. And that, that was the end of my tour of duty. On that. So that you were then, then I went out. Then I went out after I was down to San Antonio, Texas. I went. I went out to Camp Groomer, Oklahoma. That was a big army base there. Camp Groomer, Oklahoma. Fort Fort Sill was a big place too. I know Fort Sill. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You probably know of it. Well, right. I went out to Camp Groomer. Far a great big. Oh, that shell must have been that long. A 200 millimeter howitzer. They knew I was in the service. And they knew I was a number one man. So they put me at the gun. All the other guys went way back by the logs and laid down. It set me on fire. Blew my helmet off, blew my earplugs out, my whole clothes on fire. I what? should put in for medical discharge, but it didn't. But I'd finally come out of it. I thought it was killed me at first. That back flash come back yeah. all by fire, you know. Just stringed my hair, my eyebrows, everything. Why didn't they warn you about yeah, that? Yeah, they didn't. They, they put in the wrong powder charge for the gun. Oh, oh. They never fired it no more. 200 millimeter. Yeah. So then I, that Christmas, the guys, the outfit that I was with, they was going to go to occupation over in over in Italy then, they was going to go to occupation there. I said, shoot, I ain't going to wear. He said, go home and drink a little whiskey and beer and you'll come down with malaria. I turned in the 105 temperature. And then they what? sent me, yeah, yeah, more malaria again. So then I went down to the 8th Service Command down Monticello, Arkansas. They had prisoners down there. First they had 8,000 racks, 7,000 wax there. The farmers weren't going home at night. So they got rid of them. They got in all the Italian prisoners. We had 7,000 and about 500. Uh, they had about 500 German uh, pilots, they were there. They knew what I was German descent, they used to cut my hair for nothing. I didn't have to pay nothing, but they was good cooks. The Italians, they put a lot of grease in theirs. So and you, the 8th Service Command, I stayed there till I got discharged. So I this had, was the 8th was the Service Command, the group yeah. responsible for? Well, no, it, it, was just, it, it was just a camp for prisoners. Right, and you were they, responsible for the camp? Yeah, or? they were short of soap, you know, in, in, in Italy. So they had a board down in the bottom of the barracks they didn't know how they was getting rid of all that soap. They had two bushels, three, four bushel baskets of soap down there you wore his face with. And they was going to take that back to Italy when they went. Okay. But I would take them out and cut pop wood, you know, in the daytime. Two of them would take a whole loaf of bread and just break it in two and eat it. They'd bring it out. I'd lose two or three of them. They said they'd be back tomorrow. We're just going to visit some ladies out in the woods. I didn't want to use ammunition on them. So I told them when I reported, they said, they'll be back in the morning. I'd come back in the morning and they were there. We <laughs> cut that pulp wood, you know, for paper. Right, right. Uh -huh. And I stayed there, I must, I must have been there two or three months down there. And then Under I got duty. Yeah, yeah d duty. I wore MP band on warm all the time. And I, 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 was, I was the youngest one there. The other guys all older. Well, they, by now the war was almost over. Well, so, yeah, it was almost over. 45. So these troops were pretty yeah, much, yeah, year the 40, prisoners were pretty much oh, yeah, yeah, resigned were, to their fate. They, yeah. I guess they were ready to get them sent back, see. Right. So I, come, I had 85 points, so I got out. Oh. And that was it. So that was the end of it. Okay. And I got out in 19, uh, I got out in June of, June the 9th in 1945. I was in four years, two months, and eight days. Four years, two months, and eight days. That's what I was in altogether. I went, I went in with $21 a month, and after my clothing was taken out, uh, laundry, and my insurance, $10,000 insured everybody, well, I got, I got $15 a month. And then I got PFC, because I, I was in the outfit, you know, with National Guard, they was all sad seniority over me. And PFC, I got 65 when I retired. Then I got a little pension when I got out. I think it was two or three hundred dollars. Right. Must or not pay. Right. And that was the end. How did you come to enlist before Pearl Harbor? 
in the peacetime, what was the peacetime army? Uh, my order number, I, I, was, I was 21 years old in September, and then that, 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 that was 1940. Right. And in March of 41, my order number come up 97, and then the army I went, I was working for a guy, a hard man, on a farm. Oh. I said, I just work, I, that's only, they didn't, they didn't. They said that wasn't necessary, so I had to go anyhow. I was just 21. So the order number is what we would call 90, a, 97. Was what we call a draft number? Yeah, now? draft number. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I was you, just 90. So the draft was in effect then? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah was in I four. didn't realize that. Yeah. There's two colored guys ahead. I mean, they, they wasn't going to go in. They had gonorrhea and they wasn't going to go in. They gave them penicillin shot and they was back in there in two days. Oh, okay. But we went all the way. We went with clear to Camp Grant then after we left Fort Church yeah, when us, we right. went in. But the guy went in with this one on him, went into Sycamore. That was the county seat of DeKalb County. And that, I, I worked up there about, about four years before I went in. This March, this March will be 70 years. You can buy eight gallon of gas for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah. And then we went in there. We had corned beef and cabbage all the way to Fort Bragg on the train. I looked out the window one time and I couldn't see the end of the ground. And there's five engines on the train, troop train. Oh. It took us two days and two nights to get there from Camp Grant. Wow. Yeah. That's when I went in. Well, sometimes do you think back about the fact that you came from a small town and all the parts of the world you've seen? Yeah. Australia, New Zealand. But what they had over there when we first got over there, they didn't have no camp or nothing for you. That's we right. slept out in the park on the ground. Right. And then they brought us into town about 40 miles from Melbourne. They brought us into town. We lived right in, right in with the families. Yeah. I was pretty lucky. We had three. The guy had three daughters. We oh. went and they had us out in the porch. Just two guys. Okay. They didn't serve you breakfast in bed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They never had no running water or nothing. There's no army base like that anywhere else. I can no, say they, they didn't have nothing like that then yet. No, they, they was. How pretty, come they hadn't? They just they, weren't ready for the troops to arrive well, they, to be they just, No, they just wasn't ready for this nothing. It was so early. Yeah, they come quick, see. Yeah. You take 32,000 guys coming in just overnight, you know, that's a lot of guys. We'd go out every morning, they'd make us train on the street out right. there, you know, march and stuff. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't stay in bed all day. No. When did they, did they eventually build a base there for yeah, Well, I don't, I don't know what they done. Okay. The, the Japs, they quit after we, after the Marines landed on Guadalcanal, they quit bombing then right away, see. And they, they run out of ammunition. I mean, they run out of planes and they run out of ammunition. They run out of food and everything there. Right. They just kind of, you know, they, the island, they just put ships all around and they couldn't get no supplies in. They just had, they had so much more. They had battles there. It lasted all night. Right. Yeah. All over. How did, um, going back again to your early training, mm -hmm. how is it you were ending, ended up in the artillery as opposed to maybe the infantry? Well, when I went in Fort Sheridan, they just cut me off. The ones back of them went in the artillery and the ones in front went in the infantry. It was that random? Yeah, it was that close. And that, that's when you, they examined you, you never had a stitch of clothes on. Right. And the two colored guys in front of me, and they had venereal disease, and they thought they'd get out, but they didn't. Right, you told They went in the that. infantry, right. and right back of me, I went in the artillery. All the guys right back of me went in the artillery. That was a lucky draw. Yeah, it was. So we'd go out and train, though. We'd go out and train down in Camp Porch, Tennessee. All the barracks were wood. They had to get so much rain down there, they had mats to walk on to keep out of the clay and mud. And then when I come to Fort Bragg, that's a national place, you know, for permanent buildings there. Right. You couldn't see one guy from the end of the barracks to the other, the sandstorm. It was that bad. Oh. And you spinach, you know, you eat spinach, you'd have sand in that. Right, you were telling us, yeah. yeah. I know, it. yeah. But I didn't stay there too long. I had a nosebleed about every day, and then they burnt my nose out, and that helped me a little. Okay. I still, they still done it overseas too a little, but I finally got rid of that. They said the blood vessels were too close to the surface, and I had asthma too a little, and I'd right. sneeze a lot. But, but I got, that didn't keep you out of the service. No, no, it didn't. Keep me. <laughs> no, that wasn't good. That wasn't going to keep you out. No. So it was almost a luck of the draw. I mean, mm -hmm. the the artillery. The, when I was with the Navy, though, they treated me real good. We had beans for breakfast, noon, and supper. <laughs> but they 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 trade me real good. Okay. We had all English. I mean, we had all American nurses in in New Zealand too. They had a permanent hospital there, right. very big brick building. The the soil down there, it's all up and down hill like that. It's real rough, real rough. I don't know what they feed off of or what they eat off of. I was in Auckland, New Zealand. I was there. I was there about six weeks, about a month and a half. Right. Yeah, they'd take me out every morning. You know, make me march a little bit. I took care of a guy. He had a, a her, uh, had a 
he had a ruptured uh, appendix and, and they didn't get it right away and he had gangrene inside. Ooh. So I'd carry this basin of infection stuff with a nurse. I said, I don't believe I can stand it. Two days he died. He didn't, they didn't get it all, you know, inside his timmy busted right. and he got gangrene. He's about 20, 21 years old mm. and he died. That's a shame. Yeah. Well, got, got along pretty good though. They'd get you up every day though and try to make you exercise, but I was so sore yet and I, I couldn't, I couldn't bring it. You move. thought you were too sore. Yeah. They probably I, thought you could exercise. I, I, no, I still had the stitches in you. Oh, yet. of course. Yes. Yeah. They want I, to keep, keep you moving. Yeah, I know it. They didn't, didn't let, never let you sit still. On there. Well, when you talk to youngsters that you know or nephew, what what are the most memorable things that you want to make sure they know about from your four four years or more in the service during World War II? What well, do you think back on? The 18 year olds come over and they didn't know enough to lay in the center of the cot, you know, with the mosquito bar around, and the, it just looked like a bunch of buckshot hit them. They'd lay out next to the mosquito bar. Three days they were down with malaria. No matter if they took that out of brain or not, it didn't make any difference. They just got bit so much, you know, at night. They'd lay out next to that mosquito bar, and the mosquito just bit, bit them at night. I slept underneath one of them for 32 months, and you had to know how to lay or they'd bite you. Oh, they'd, my gosh. At night, just a female mosquito gave you malaria. Right. Yeah. Um, we got to we get reemplacements re in, you know. Guys got sick, or like a guy drove in, hit the coral rock, and died. He hit his, split his head open. Oh, no. And, you know, you lose men, and we got replaced 18, 19 year old. But the truth, they didn't know nothing about the mosquitoes. They didn't know enough to lay in the center of that cot. If Nobody trained lay, them, huh? You know, if you didn't lay in the center of that cot, you, they just bite you all night. And they, and they had a prong about that long. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the prong on them that long. Oh, no, that, that no, must be No, they were, they were monsters. <laughs> but on New Caledonia now, they never had the malaria mosquitoes there. But, and uh, they'd stay outside of the night and they'd burn cow manure. And that cow manure, the smoke from that cow manure would keep them away. Oh. But they wasn't malaria. Okay. And, and they had all kind of fruit there. They had, uh, they had uh, oranges and they had, they had, they had oranges and they had, oh, they had real beautiful, uh, oh, the man, the man, uh, 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 these great big, uh, great big, you know, what they call grape, grapefruits. Okay. They had them, and then they had these ones grow out in little bushes, you know, on the ground. They're real full of needles, pineapples. Okay. They had a lot of oh, them yeah. there too. Yeah, they grew them there, oh, and right. they had bananas too. You never ate a banana on yourself about that long. He ripened on a tree, but you had to watch for the poison spiders. Whoa. Yeah, they, they'd bite you. Oh my. Yeah. And then we had centipedes too. They just sting with their tail. They would get in the gun shells. The shell was about that long, and then the, they had the shell in the end that had the powder, seven charges of powder in that shell behind. But it had its primer in the in the in the shell in the brass shell, you know, behind. And right. the shell lid in front. You'd always reject the, sh the the cartridge that is in. You only said it had seven charges in there, and that was all brass. And then centipedes would get in there, you had to walk. They'd get your hands or your legs every time. Whoa. Shell, the shell, the shell was about that long, and, 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 and then the casing. And the powder was always in the casing, and the primer was in there too. So you always had to get the right powder charger. You didn't know where the shell was going to light. You know, it had to be right. Oh. Yeah, if you, you'd shoot seven miles. So seven that miles? Seven miles. From your howitzer? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good gracious. With the full charge. Yeah, Good. that's quite a ways. They were awful acrid. They were pretty acrid. So yeah. when you were in one of these artillery yeah, things that, where you were firing that, yeah. so many shells a minute, yeah. they were already charged then, weren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Uh -huh. it, it, it depends on how far it goes, the powder charge. They'd always number the powder charge you put in. It had seven in there. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you left all them seven in there, you'd shoot seven miles. But when you cut it down, it wouldn't go as far. Right. It all depends on how you had the elevation. One time when I told them the elevation was too low and they fired the lieutenant and they fired the corporal bow to give me, or the sergeant. I told them it was too low, it hit right in the middle of the, we didn't fire all day. It hit right in the center of the infantry. Oh no. The, yeah, the elevation was too low. I told yeah, them it was. Right, right. I told them it was, you know. Friendly fire. Well, the yeah. shell didn't go out far enough. See, it didn't go beyond the infantry. See, we had to always just fire over the of infantry. Of course, yeah, that's what yeah. your job was. Yeah, it was sad. Well, how many men were on the gun crew for each gun? We had eight, eight, uh, 16 guys, two crews. They, if they fired day and night, we had one fire in the daytime, one fire at night. We used to sleep right underneath the house, right underneath the gun. And the, the gun had, we always had a net up. We had an earthquake every day and, and a volcano every day. We wrapped up on the mountains. 
Really? We just two degrees off of the equator. So you know what the temperature was, and all white sand. You could dig down three, four feet and hit water. Oh. You'd hit ocean water. What was the typical temperature? Well, it, it'd run around 120 in the daytime, 100 at night. How did you sleep? And the moon, see, we were south of the international date line, so the moon and the sun went around to the north. It wasn't like here. You know, it goes around to the south, and that, that's where you always tell. You lost a day going over, and you gained a day coming back. Right. Yeah, international date line. You heard of that already? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm coming back to your your eight man crew. What did each person do on that crew? Uh, what was it? Can you tell me what the crew members did? Are there there must have been people who loaded the gun and. Oh yeah, yeah. You see that you saw that picture there. She had, each one had their own position. Carry the gun, get the powder charge right, and they carry the gun and they get the gun out. They come in cases. They come in big cases, maybe four or five shells in a case, and and, and that's what I was telling about the centipedes. We had to watch for them, and you had to get all the ammunition, and everything ready. It had to be ready to go in the gun, you know, right away. And so that they, was the job of the loaders. Yeah, yeah. They had well, they had a corporal and a sergeant, and, and I was a number one man, and then number two man, three and four and five, six. There was eight guys all together right. on the crew. That was the whole crew. We had two crews. Right. You know, but to the to somebody. Like, to the layperson like me, that sounds like a lot of people. Oh, yeah. How did you avoid getting in each yeah, other's that, that was 16 guys, see. Yeah, how did you avoid getting in each other's way when you were firing the gun? Well, they had to stand back. Okay. <laughs> well, they just had one crew at a time, see. Right. The other crew, they'd stay that's back. That's still eight men. But, yeah, if they lost too much sleep, they wouldn't, they wouldn't work too good. I see. You know, you had to get your sleep a little. Right. We had one guy one night, he woke up, I guess he kind of went off up here, and he had a semi-automatic. He emptied that whole thing right out through his mosquito bar. We had that dug down that deep in the soil, you know, in the sand, and the bunks all set down in there all the way around, about eight guys in a tent all the way around. He got up one night, you know, and he picked up his gun, and he, started, he, he said he heard something out there, and he emptied that whole damn gun right out there through the brush. So they had to take him, take that away from him. Oh, God. Running automatic, you know, the, the Japs would tie themselves, they'd always try to get you when you went to chow. They'd tie themselves up in a tree. You, you'd never know you had him dead or not. Right. You could empty a whole gun out and he'd still be up there. He tied himself up there. Right. Yeah. He'd always try to get you when you went to chow. Oh. Yeah. Well, of course were, you were, didn't like. Were you ever, was your unit ever fired on by a sniper when you were going to chow? Well, they had a gun. They had a gun. The Japanese had a gun. They must tug it up in the mountains. He, he, he'd, try to get the, he'd try to get the ships come in the supply, see, and he had it on tracks. Great big gun. I think it more than a 155 yet. Wow. And they just couldn't get him. He had it on tracks, and he, he'd roll that gun out on them tracks and raise it back out, and he'd pour on the ships that come in the harbor. And one day, I and the sergeant, we was in the foxhole. He said, do you think they're going to get him? <laughs> That's the way the shell, I said, as long as you can hear that, it ain't going to get you. I said, the one you don't hear is going to get you. <laughs> and he, one night he was out, and he fired, and this airplane was up there. And by gosh, he saw the fire flash. And boy, he went over and he dropped a torpedo in on him. He blew him out of the sky high. Gun, yep. Japanese, and all over the we never He never fired no more. Wow. They finally got him. And then Morse Machine Charlie, he used to come over. He'd come over about the time you wanted to bed down. He knew right where he was. He'd come over. He's so high that I think they had 40 or 50 millimeters. It took a 90 millimeter to reach him. They couldn't reach him. He was too high. So one night he was up there, and the night fighter was up there, oh. same time. He waited till he got off of the island, and just, he heard him coming, and he blowed him through the sky. The bombs and the plane never blew up. He never come over no more. Not if he was blown up. He blowed him through all the sky. The night fighter got him. Why was he called Washing Machine? He shot him down, you know. Why was he called Washing Machine Charlie? Washing Machine Charlie, he'd always come over about the time he went to sleep, about okay. 1030 at night, every night. A very distinctive. He was, always on, he was always on time, and he'd always after the airport. He was always at the airport because he had these big mats laid down, you know, so the airplanes wouldn't go down the sand. Well, he'd just tear them to pieces. He'd drop a 500-pound bomb down there, and they'd just, they'd just tear them all to pieces. Oh, yeah. So the planes couldn't fly, you know. So they had to fix them the next day. They had day. to fix them all up the next day. And they had colored guys go out there in that heat. That's about the only guys that stand it. And they'd lay new mats down, and then the planes are ready to go. Then they'd go back and bomb Bougainville. Yeah, they go back and bomb them. Getting that island ready for your yeah. attack, yes. They do. He'd do that every... He'd come in every night. One night we was there, we just about ready to fire, got four order, and we was all all ready to go. And, and he was coming over, and, and we was all all run for the hole, you know, to go in, you know, shelter, you know, bomb shelter. And one guy hollered snake. Them guys oh. come out there quicker than they went oh. in. He was just kidding him, you know, so he'd have room to stand. Oh, no. That's the, not fair. Sand. No, he hollered snake. Yeah. 
Well, they had all kind of tricks that way. And that was about the end of it. That was a long time ago. A lot of day, times you can't remember just the exact day of the day that happened, you know, and everything. But it was always most of the month. But we waited at least five and six months on the guns and rifles. We had these little carbines. They, were, they weren't as big as a big gun. Right. They held about 32 rounds with the clip. Right. They was a little short gun. You could fire them with one hand. They call them little carbines. Right. They were they part a 30 millimeter shell. The Japanese they had a 25 millimeter. When it hit you, it explode. It just tear you all pieces. You didn't live if they hit you with it. It, mm. it. You had a shell. It, it was 25 millimeter. When it hit you, it explode, and it just tear you up. You know. And then that, most all the officers they carried that 45. You know, the pistol 45. They yep. carried them. Yep. That carried a big shell too. But the infantrymen had the uh, Garand. The infantry, they had the Browning automatics. Oh, they did. Brownings, yeah. What about the M1? Yeah, the M1, the right. M1s, yeah, the M1s. Uh -huh. That's what they had. Then they got all new rifles too. They was more automatic than the old ones. Well, first we had the World War II. Oh, the Springfield. And, uh, yeah, Springfield. Yeah, they they was a kicking gun though. They the, uh, the ammunition of 30 millimeter, 30. It's a pointed pointed shell. Right. But they had tracer bullets for that too. Right. When they fired, you know, the, they would fire out, burn out. Try to uh, be able to spot one, their One B-17 come in, the one like my wife worked on. They come in one day, it had holes in it that big around. And the co-pilot and the, the co-pilot and the pilot was dead. And yeah. the radio operator brought it in. He brought it in on one motor. It wow. never flew again. It had holes blowed into it. You could pinner walk through the thing. The whole fuselage pinners were blowed off. The back end. Was this on Guadalcanal? Or? Yeah, Guadalcanal. Oh, wow. Yeah, B-17. <laughs> They was a rough, rough bomber. Yeah, they take a lot. I could survive. Yeah, I could survive. And that the B twenty fours now, they weren't quite as fast and couldn't carry quite a bigger load as the B seventeen. The B seventeen was a little faster and it carried a bigger load. They used a lot of them in Germany. Uh -huh. Yeah, they did a lot of them. So the planes were flying out of Guadalcanal oh, yeah, to, yeah. to they, bomb. The they'd various... go out. They'd go out on raids every day. Every right. day they'd go out. Fighters, fighters would always follow the bombers, you know, to keep the zeros away. That zero had a thousand horsepower motor in it. One time he ran out of fuel and he landed on the beach and they got it. They went to the whole plane, didn't hurt it hardly at all. He landed right on the beach, right on the water, and they got the whole, it had a thousand horsepower motor in there. It didn't have no armor plate around the pilot at all. One bullet hit the gas tank, knocked it down, but it could outfly anything we had, but it couldn't come out of a dive. Huh. No, no way. But it could outrun anything we had. Yeah. Yeah, it had a thousand horsepower motor in there. Until later in the war yeah, when we began yeah. to get some better uh, planes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They was good. They were some good flyers. Yeah, they was good. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about today? Well, it's been fascinating. Uh, uh, that was just about it. I had the most, I had the best food though when I was with the Navy. They fed good. Of course, they always had a supply ship tea and the Navy the Navy had that hospital ship there. It only come in so close to the firing line. It come New Hebrides. I was about four or five hundred miles. I rode in a B, 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 B forty seven. We went way high. We had to go up eight thousand feet. We run into a storm. It was about six seven hundred miles from Guadalcanal, and there I went to a Navy base there. They had a big Navy base there, but the Japs never fought on that island. That was, it was so small. I see. Mm -hmm. So the they, they gave you good medical service yeah, they, in the they, Navy. Yeah, they, they did. The Navy, Navy weighed on me good. Yeah, they was real That's good. Nice. Yeah, they always, they always had a lot of help. I didn't realize that the services could have combined, mm -hmm. so Army yeah. Army troops well, were being helped well, by the Navy yeah, medical. Yeah, well, we always had the CBs, you know, they'd always yeah. come in too. Sure. The, the Navy. Rebuild the uh, runways. They, 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 uh, they'd uh, repair the ships and stuff like that if they needed it. And they had welders, you know, and stuff like that. Then we got a big generator when we was on Fiji. It lit up the whole camp. I took care of it. I, I'd put oh, gas right, yeah. in it, you know, and take care of it. Right. It was a big generator. And while one, you were waiting to go back to your unit, yeah. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. It, well, we had lights. The lights would go out about 10 o'clock every night. I remember one night, it was there, it was there over Christmas and New Year, all them ships in the harbor, they cut loose with their big air horns. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because we'd fur enough away from action. And then after I left, I don't know how long it was, they went to the Philippines, over half of the Miracle Division got killed. This sergeant here that she got a picture of that I went down to St. Louis to see, he was there. He said the Japs come right to the infantry. He said it was bad. They wanted to keep the Malins. That was in the, in the Philippines. I don't know how long they stayed there. They was there quite this a while. This was your unit, yeah. I, I, I'd left the outfit yeah, there. Yeah, you were back. Yeah, I was back home when I was coming home. Yeah, that had been a long time ago. I'll say. 
Well, thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah. You've done a good job of telling us a great deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, do you have kind of life, kind of like that, a lot of life history. Very you much know. so. Yes, it's been fascinating. Would yeah. You, I I had had, I'd like to give you one more chance. If there's anything else you want to reminisce about, I guess not. Okay. The ship I came home on—it was a Liberty ship. We we didn't zig and zag from Guadalcanal. We come straight home. We come straight to the Panama Canal. By then it was for safe yeah, enough to all, do that. All the way through. It didn't take us long. I, it took us a month ago, but I don't think it took us over two weeks to come back. Huh. Yeah, it's about thirteen thousand miles from here to Australia. Yeah, from New York, where they went. Right. A long time. It is a long trip. Yeah. But we were running into that storm that time. I was on a ship, had 5,000. I forget the name of it. John, John, John Herring or something. But it didn't take nothing over the bow. But it drawed about 30, 40 feet of water and it stood out of the water that high. You take 5,000 guys on there, that's a lot of guys. Yeah. And we had these bunks. They had, they, had, they had this canvas and they had pipes up and they had this canvas tied to them pipes that holds through them pipes to hold them in position. I was in the bottom bunk and they had them five high. Five? Every time the guy'd go up, he'd step in my face or step <laughs> on my hand. So we had we had two. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we had two meals a day. We had breakfast about ten o'clock and then a dinner and supper about four. And somebody would holler, "Bay, you know, like sheep, they have a lot of mutton over there, you know, in Australia. Nobody would eat." And then they had to, they had some chicken there too. Everything was dehydrated, like the potatoes and your eggs, and and everything like that. The reason why I drank a little coffee, because I sterilized the water. You see, the water was pretty foul. Okay. And that's why I got hepatitis. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. So often always, you had five people sleeping at the same yeah, time? Yeah, in the same, right straight up. Oh, my gosh. But when you got in rough water, that top guy, he got pretty rocky up there. <laughs> and then yeah. they had these lead pipes on the ship, you know, and they started to break. And they started water all over the floor. Oh, no. Yeah, and they had to mend them back, and they had a hard time doing that. And then we got out of the... Then we got out of the out of the storm. Well, it was all right. Everything quietened up, you know. They quietened everything. Settled now these down. ships were manned by they the had, Navy. They had waves twenty, 20 and thirty feet. They go way down. And if you didn't hit that ship head on, it it just shake the daylight. Right. Or it roll it over. Right. So you had to hit it head on. But, but when it went in there, it just like going into a wall. It just jerked like that. Them waves were that strong. They were thirty and forty feet high. You go down the ship and go clear down in there, and you couldn't see it. Pretty soon you'd come up. It'd come up on top of the wave and you'd be riding high again. And that storm would last quite a while. They call them like typhoons. Right. You know. There was one just hit the Solomon Islands here about a month ago. It wiped the whole island out, killed all the people on it, and everything. It wore it out. It never came out of water. It just stayed down. Oh. Some islands come up and some go down. But I don't know how the ships miss them all. <laughs> they stay down. But it's it's um, you see water for thirty days and thirty nights. You're out there a long time. Especially when you're from the Midwest and yeah. haven't seen it before, yes. I weighed 20 pounds. I lost 20 pounds on the way over because I didn't eat much because I got seasick so bad. Oh, my God. You can't keep nothing down there. Yeah. No, you can't keep nothing down. I wonder down. you need a time some, to train. Sometimes you get the runs, too. You know, you get the scars because the food don't digest with you. But that little ship just rocks all the time. Like, it don't only rock so much, but it rolls. It'll roll like right. that and then up and down like this, see, when it hits them big waves. Yeah. So but you can always tell when you're getting close to land, you'll see the seagulls and stuff coming out, right. and you'll see them porpoises going like this. <laughs> They'll fall her. Good so, sign. Yeah, that's a sign you're so, closer, closer so to land. So it took most of you quite a while to recover when you got to Australia oh, yeah. because yeah, you lost run, so much. You was run down, you never had the right kind of food to eat, see? Yeah, and you had any exercise. But we got to Australia, though. They fed us good over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, they fed us good. Exactly. Well, when you were 18, I bet you never suspected you'd be in Australia when you were 22. No. That was quite yeah, something. I, was, I, was, I, I hit 22, let's see. I was in just about a year. I went in March the 31st, and then I was, I was, 20, I was 22 in, in September, that September. And then I was, I was, headed, we was headed for overseas that right. fall, I, I mean, that winter. I'll never forget when we went over. They uh, took, left us off at the Indian Town Gap, and we got off the train from Camp Forest, Tennessee. They stopped off there for a little rest. They just loaded it up in cattle cars. You know what you haul cattle in? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they loaded us up in. And, what? and then they took us to this New York. Oh, my golly. Yeah, we didn't load back up on the train no more. <coughs> oh, gosh. They just loaded us all up and stood up. You had little ropes to hang on like that and semis, semi-cattle trucks. What? Yeah. yeah how, the long, whole, how long a train was that? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't load up back up on the train again. How long a trip was that? How oh, many it, hours? It wasn't about, about a day. Holy cow. Yeah, Indian Town Gap. See, you're getting pretty close to New York. Then. Okay, but still, that's yeah. a long time to hold a strap. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they just hauled us in in semi-trailers. Right. They come to train, got us in them too. We stayed overnight there in camp. That's about all. We 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 were moving all the time. Well, this has been a fascinating story. Yeah. You, yeah. You're you're representative of of your generation, the the mm -hmm. individuals who who were it, living in. It's something. It's something to live through all that. I'll say. Most all the guys my age now, are, they're dead. Yeah. I imagine that sergeant, he died now too. The other one died, he, he, was, a, he was born in Kentucky. He lived at Trenton, Illinois. He, di he just died last year. He's a part of your crew. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's in my crew, gun, gun crew. Okay. He's in my gun crew. And then the sergeant was too. Right. He lived down at Belleville. The gun, he, he the gun leader, the crew yeah, leader. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Albert. Yeah. This yeah. has been, I'm glad you could come and, yeah. and give us this, your experiences. The only thing that bothered me yet, well, since I had malaria, it left my stomach a little weak, and then I had hepatitis. I, I was about 24 years old, I guess, and I got discharged. I never even went out with a girl for a whole year. Oh. I couldn't get out of bed. Someone had hepatitis. It works on your liver and your right. spleen. You know, it swells and up. fatigue, too. You couldn't take a drink of beer. You, you could take a drink of beer, it'd all come back up. Right. Yeah. Plus, it's very fatiguing. Well, that, that, hardly any people come out of that, you know what? It stays with you. You know, that singer one time got it on TV. The, the judges, oh, you know, yeah. Okay. The mother got it, and she couldn't even sing. <laughs> well, you were telling you or your wife were telling me there was a moment where they, there was a telegram to your family back home about how ill you were. Mm -hmm. that, your family got a telegram saying oh, how yeah. ill you were. When I come back from New Zealand, I got a, I got an awful attack of malaria again, and I was just yellow as gold. And that nurse that took care of me, she took that to mom and bounce, she jerked that out, and that's why I went out one day at noon, didn't come back till the next day. You got yeah, you, just, were, you were knocked out. I mean, yeah, just got another attack of, of malaria. Gone yeah, conscious. I just went out. I think I had a, I think I had a little yellow jaundice too. Clearly, that's what they call. You was all yellow. Everything right. was yellow but your teeth. Right. right. Yeah. The hepatitis yeah. makes you orange yeah. and yellow too. Yeah, I was pretty weak. I, I mean, I was still run down yet from the operation. See, right. I mean, I, I hadn't come out of that too good yet, and I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But, I, wouldn't but I was just saying that your family got a telegram yeah. about how ill you were. Yeah, yeah. They she were probably was, very worried. This nurse, yeah, she was from Rhode Island. I called her Rhode Island Red. She <laughs> come by every Sunday, pick me up, make me sing in the choir to go to church. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I knew quite a lot of songs. She'd come by and pick me up. He says, "I'll take good care of you." Till you wanna, I tell her that. Do you want to, as a as a final note, do you want to tell us about what your grandfather gave you? You were huh? telling me about what your grandfather gave you. Oh, oh yeah, my, my rosary I got, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, let's see, I was on, yeah, I was still on Guadalcanal yet. I was still in service, and the, it was coming an envelope, and that cross was hanging out, and I lost the crucifix off the end of it. I lost the crucifix, and that's 65 years old. I think that's what brought me back from the South Pacific. I'd say it every day, and a lot of guys. He said, "I'm an older boy." He says, "I may go to hell," but he says, "I ain't going to go to church no more." Oh. He was he was at Polish. And the boy says, I'm going to go. And then I went, and the shrapnel was coming right to the top of the tent, and I was the only one. At the I was, I, was, I, was, I was the only one there. I was the only one out of 240, you and the priest? 240 guys. I was the only one. I went on Sunday, and I had, I had my rosary with me. But I got down underneath this, I think I had an old board or something, or a piece of coconut limb or something I got out down there. But the, the shrapnel was coming right to the top of the, uh, the tent. Making holes where they were holding uh, the service, and uh, that's there. There, the 65 years old, and that crucifix there come from John Pope Paul, Paul II, Pope John. Uh, my priest uh, from Loden and Paxson, he was down to St. Louis, and he gave that back. He gave that back to me. He gave that to me when he come back. He saw the Pope. Oh, oh, yeah, he saw the Pope. So it had been blessed after, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been it blessed. It had been part it's, of your, yeah, your faith at the, while you were in the service. <laughs> Fifty, fifty-three Hail Marys and five Glory Bees and, and five Our Fathers in that, and he got a said. Okay. And good luck from. Well, thank I, you. I always keep that with me. Thank you very much. Is there yeah, anything else where's, we need where's, to Henry? Where's, where's the little lady was in here? Where's the little lady was in I'm here? I'm not sure if she's. You think she's here yet? No, she's she's gone to her office. She'll be back. I see. I see. I want to give her four leaf clover. Oh, that's right. Well, I think we're done then.
string band too. That's nice too. And Ozzy being a good caller, string band. We used to pull curl toad in Indiana. We used to pull curl down the covered bridge. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Street fair. It's up on top of the building, way up on top. Yeah, we pulled them down. Yeah, dance on top of that one once. Yeah. Huh? That was when we were real fishing. <laughs> we pulled <laughs> Curtis Fjord. We pulled Curtis Fjord in. Have you been with Bill in the river boat in Jambo Lake? No, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've been there. Oh, was this square dancing or regular yeah, dancing? One, one, uh, yeah, one, yeah. We went to the pool where they danced. Yeah. We had dinner and danced on the bank and then yeah. fish yeah, down yeah. in Mississippi and danced. Yeah, I didn't talk to Forrest where we went because uh, we didn't know what spring, spring fair was anyway. No, well, we've done the rock, rock fair. Rock fair, rock fair, fair in Rock. Yeah, yeah, we've been down there. And we pulled the fjord in. We danced in Effingham. We danced down there. Rock. Mm-hmm. We danced in Effingham. We danced all over. Well, you're a little late in starting. Heck, I was 50, 50 years 52, old. 52, 52, huh? 52, 52 years. Took me two years to talk you into it. 